to introduce uh, Mr. Putin, President of the Russian Federation Vladimir Putin, and Viktor Orban, Prime Minister of the of Hungary, as well as members, the members of the delegations. Let me give the word to the Prime Minister of Hungary. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome the President of the Russian Federation, and I would like to thank, on behalf of Hungary and the Hungarian people, I would like to thank Mr. Putin for visiting us. His visit is always an important event for us. We've had lengthy talks with him. At the center of these talks were economic issues. As you must have, as you must know, Hungary tries to keep transparent ties with Russia. We do it in a way that every year we talk about our relations. Last year I was in Moscow and uh, this year Mr. Putin visited us here and we said that we have uh, implemented all the obligations that we have expressed on our previous meetings. Hungary has opened a general consulate in Kazan and uh, we have signed documents on the level of uh, foreign ministers. We would like to thank Mr. Putin for modifying our previous agreements on gas deliveries which means that uh, we will receive gas deliveries up to 2021 and today we will start talks on gas deliveries for the period after 2021. We also talked about cooperation in nuclear energy. We have uh, overcome most of the obstacles and only one problem remains. We are waiting the decision of the European Union. We are sure that our what we do uh, corresponds with the uh, with, with the comply with the European uh, demands and we will start the construction next year. The results of the economic cooperation are especially valuable because we achieved these results in a very difficult economic situation. As you see, in the western part of the European continent, uh, anti-Russian politics has become very popular. And it is in, in these circumstances that we had to protect our economic relations with Russia. And unfortunately, despite all our efforts, the trade between our two countries has reduced. And uh, now we, we have lost six and a half billion dollars and Hungary continue to state that to state that you cannot solve economic problems with political means because this will do harm to everyone and that is why we hope that in the near future we will be able to see better relations between Russia and the European Union it is very difficult to go forward if we don't have uh, constructive relations relationships with the the main powers in the world so many of our expectations were implemented uh, in the cultural sphere we have agreed uh, for student exchanges hungary agreed to uh, 
to, re to reconstruct a number of Orthodox churches. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the main results of our cooperation is that in the last two years, according to the agreements between me and uh, Mr. Putin, we have increased, in increased investments uh, in the food industry. This is very important for the Hungarian economy and for the Hungarian agriculture. This allows us, us to give investment uh, to a number of other industries. Hungary has uh, state-of-the-art industry and we will be able to go forward in the international trade. Ladies and gentlemen, we know that in the, European, in the European Union there are discussions on a number of international issues. We have discussed these issues as well, but from a geopolitical point of view, Hungary and Russia uh, cannot be compared. We tried to keep and uh, salvage all of the Russia-Hungary relations and contacts. And when the world will return to a better logic of cooperation, then uh, Hungary will have even better relations with Russia. So our talks uh, from the economic and political standpoint were very successful, and I would like to uh, thank Mr. Putin. And now we give the word to Mr. Putin. Distinguished Prime Minister, ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I would like to thank Prime Minister and all our Hungarian colleagues for inviting us here, for giving us such an opportunity to continue the long-standing tradition of exchanging our views at the highest level. We have discussed a whole range of matters related to our bilateral relations and as it was just said, the focus was first on supporting and finding new ways to explore our economic partnership. We do appreciate the willingness of Hungary to gradually develop bilaterally lucrative businesses as Hungary is a very trustworthy friend of us, partner of us. We have a regular political dialogue. We have very close contacts at the level of foreign ministries. We have very effective intergovernmental commission on economic issues. Today, during the talks, we paid utmost attention to matters related to economy. At, these are the real figures, unfortunately, within the last three years. We have to admit that there was a downward trend in circulation of goods between the two countries, almost twofold. The negative dynamics is seen in terms of investments. Last year, the investments, bilateral investments, have reduced by two times. Of course, that is not satisfying. In that relation, we decided to outline certain measures to be more proactive in terms of investments and trade. One of the opportunities was just mentioned, and that is to expand the investment scope in the context of our two economies. We have agreed to harmonize our work in the sphere of energy. We do appreciate the fact that we are working on a project to create two more units for the MPP package, and that amounts to 12 billion euros. This nuclear power plant has been working for quite a time, as you know, and it produces almost 40 percent of energy of the whole country. Two more units will make it possible to increase by two times the energy output, thus meeting the demand of Hungary to have new industries up and running absolutely new kind of jobs will be created. Around 10,000 jobs will be available for the country. In gas and oil sector, as you know, most of hydrocarbons 
used by Hungary is supplied by the Russian Federation and almost Hungary is a very important key part of the chain of transit of our resources to Europe. Hungary is a very successful player in exploring the hydrocarbon reservoirs and deposits on the territory of Russia. Mob concern of Hungary explores the energy resources of Siberia and is going to increase its output. So far as we know, its daughter company is giving more than 500,000 tons of oil per year. We have also agreed to reinforce our industrial cooperation and partnership mostly in the sphere of high technologies. With the help of Russian composite materials, Hungary have established a manufacturing line of buses and we are to modernize the Budapest Metro rolling stock as well as to start delivering carriages, railway carriages to third world countries. We also have very good partnership in pharmaceuticals industry and the agricultural sector as well. We have very close ties between the whole 19 regions of Hungary and more than 50 regions of Russia. We are all for supporting that initiatives to have a direct cooperation. As you know, today we are signing the complex program for regional, interregional development for the years 2017-2022. We are also working on bilateral cultural and humanitarian relations, educational links. It is very good to see that in Hungary we see a rise of interest towards Russian language. We are very grateful to Prime Minister and to all our Hungarian colleagues for the kind of help they give to those who teach Russian and to those who help develop contacts, humanitarian contacts in what concerns, for example, the renovation of facilities, cultural facilities and institutions. During the talks, we lay special emphasis on the European and international agenda issues. I in brief our colleagues giving our accounts of what takes place in the east of Ukraine, what takes place in the Middle East, in Syria in particular, and in that context we have a common view. We need to unite our efforts in the fight against international terrorism, political settlement in Syria and other Middle East countries, and the early return to the normal life will be the only way to promote the migrational crisis relief in Europe. I do hope that we will be very active in cooperating with our Hungarian colleagues on all the tracks I've enumerated. I would like again to thank our colleagues from Hungary and Prime Minister personally for a very warm welcome, for very business-like and constructive dialogue. We have a second part of agenda to complete with our ministers will continue our talks but still the first the initial part in narrow format have already demonstrated that we have the whole necessary willingness to continue working very actively Jó napot kívánok, Mészáros László vagyok az M1 hírcsatornától. Orbán Viktor miniszterelnök úrtól kérdezném, miként látja azt a nemzetközi terület? A question to Mr. Orbán. How do you see the international space where Russia and Hungary can cooperate in the future? Are there any changes in it? Of course, with our national, considering our national pride, we have to to see that Russia and Hungary are moving in different dimensions. I'm speaking about uh, geopolitical and political issues. But I believe that best uh, qualities in a human are when he knows uh, his place and knows his possibilities. And so he, everyone needs to set goals that correspond to his uh, well, situation and his state. So when I was informed about the 
situation in Syria, we can only uh, enter the uh, uh, the peace efforts when protecting the Christian minorities, and Hungary can only enter uh, in, uh, and help resolve international issues where it can. And I'm very thankful to Mr. Putin. As for the international arena, we all feel, and it is in the air actually, that great changes are underway in the world. And we believe that the changes that are underway, they create better conditions for European, Russian and Hungarian relationships and for relationships between Hungary and Russia. And I'm hopeful about ne the next years and I believe that the main condition for peace is better context between Russia and the European Union. Thank you. Next question. Good day. I am from Auriga Agency. Before the talks, many newspapers said that the talks will circle around the energy matters. Have you talked about the North Stream being somewhat directed through Hungary and through about the fact that there will be new talks on the credit line. Thank you. Lose, we wouldn't want to risk losing uh, uh, ties with Russia and uh, we want to see construction work to begin as soon as possible because the work hasn't started yet. Now we are not trying to change this agreement. It is not on the agenda. As for gas deliveries, we cannot avoid the question about the consistency of uh, gas deliveries through Ukraine. This is a key issue. We know about a lot of difficult moments and problems and we are always for the diversification of deliveries. The European Union has blocked our efforts and currently we are interested into bringing these issues back on the agenda. We also have lines to the north, towards the north, and if our economic interests demand that, then we will buy gas from Russia through the north, northern stream, north stream. I would like to add that we have talked about the project which unfortunately is no longer on the table that is South Stream and as for the Northern Stream 2, then of course I would like to say that Hungary has the opportunity to receive the gas supply through the Northern Stream, through Slovakia, Austria. There are different routes under discussion. That project is real. It is also possible to direct the transit through Turkey within the framework of the Turkish Stream. There are some other variants too. <coughs> By the way, we don't set any political goals in terms of transit through Ukraine. If it is economically expedient and if it is a reliable transit partner, then it's okay. The, the whole thing is about making some diversification and being very expedient in terms of costs. Russian gas is one good sure to be delivered to Hungary. As for other aspects of 
and I mean the project on the Pax MPP, 12 billion euros, I said. 80% was agreed to be insured through the loan line with the help of Russia, but there are other variants. We are ready to finance it in full, but then the provisions of the agreement should be a bit different, you understand. Everything is possible. We can implement all the arrangements. That is important that these are 10,000 jobs in the high technology sector. That is a huge contribution into the development of Hungarian economy as a whole. The Izvestia newspaper. Uh, Igor Sazayev, Izvestia. I have a question about Ukraine. Mr. Putin, your position on the conflict in Don Donbass is quite clear. I would like to know why the current uh, problematic situation uh, has been intensified uh, at this moment, and I would like to ask Mr. Orban, uh, because uh, there is a Hungarian minority in the region, what can you do to prevent discrimination of the Hungarian minority? As for the two days outbreak, we have observed that it really happened so, and it was Ukraine who provoked the situation. It was it happened on Friday. These were military hostilities, and it, on Saturday, the so-called voluntary groups of Ukraine seized some parts of the self-proclaimed republics, and they advanced for some 200 meters, and on Saturday, they have to come back to their positions. And there are several reasons to the situation. First, the leadership of Ukraine, they need money today. And it is easier to get money from the European Union through some certain states of Europe and the, from the US and international institutions when pretending to be a victim of aggression. Second, during the campaign in the USA, Ukraine uh, has decided to take a unilateral stance, a stance for supporting only one candidate, and the oligarchs in Ukraine finance that candidate, you know, or that, you know, candidate lady, it's better to say. And now they need to improve relations with the current administration, and for that they decided to create the situation in order to involve the current administration of the United States, and this way to establish a dialogue. And the third reason has to do with the domestic policies, because they have many failures in terms of many agendas in economy, in healthcare, and now they need to galvanize people to support the leadership, and it is easier when you try to do it among, against the backdrop of some military activities in the country. And today's leadership of Ukraine, they are not ready to implement Minsk agreements at all, and they are just looking for some pretext to refuse to comply with the Minsk agreement. That is another reason why they provoked this conflict. I sincerely hope that all the sensible people in Ukraine, as well as those who are truly interested in settling this issue through political means, would not allow the situation to go on the most negative track. But Instead, everyone would apply all efforts to make every side comply with the Minsk Agreement. We have had useful relations and made some agreements. Ukraine was a topic of our talks today because it's our common neighbor. Hungary is interested 
uh, in uh, Ukraine implementing the uh, Minsk agreements. Hungary uh, is doing everything is in its uh, in its power uh, for the agreements to be implemented. We are interested in Ukraine being a stable country and successful country, and everything we do within the framework of the cooperation between Russia and Ukraine, we do. But the starting point, the starting point is peace, and peace is only possible through the Minsk agreements. So we are interested in the implementation of the Minsk agreements, because it will improve the situation not only in the region, but will, will also solve a number of other issues. For example, it will give democratic rights to uh, minorities, national minorities in the region, because currently we hear talks about uh, education and language in Ukraine, and we believe they're not favorable, but we are interested in a successful Ukraine, and we will do all in our uh, all we can. And the last question from the Vigaterka, Russia, please. Good evening. I'm Pavel Zarubin. I present the Russia, Russia TV channel. I'd like to continue this very important topic of energy. I'd like to hear a bit more details about the arrangements. So we have the figures. We know 75 of oil and 60 percent of gas supply is secured with the help of the Russian Federation, but we know that Hungary is not really willing to expand the Northern Stream project, but you are really interested in working on the South Stream, which, as you know, is not on the table. Now we have the Turkish Stream. So we would like to know the details about the sectors and about the ways you want to cooperate on that track. Thank you. Mr. Putin said something I would like to repeat. It is important for us that Russian resources, Russian oil and gas come to the territory of Hungary. We have agreed on that with Russia and the president of Russia guaranteed that this will happen. All the other issues are, well, technical. The main thing is that we have the agreement. The president has given me the, world, the word, his word, and Hungary will receive oil and gas that it needs for the country to be to be to develop the southern stream is beyond our uh, our competence the Turk we are interested in the turkish stream and if we can we will help developing it as for the north stream we are also interested in it if we do not receive gas from any other sources I have to say that Hungary is, uh, not a, is not in a very fav favorable situation. We are surrounded uh, by the European Union and we have built lines to towards Croatia and other countries from where we can receive uh, oil and gas as well. But none of these countries have built their own pipelines to make deliveries as well. So we are blocked from this side. And that is why, from our point of view, the key issue is that the president of the Russian Federation says that through any means, whatever it may require, Hungary will receive the oil and the gas, and we are thankful to Mr. Putin for that. Diversification is a good thing, but if it is only our country that does that and other countries don't, then uh, there are only unilateral 
contacts and relations left. I'd like to repeat once again, the key agreement for us is the agreement with Mr. Putin. I can only add what has been said. We are ready to do everything to ensure the deliveries. We are a credible, trustworthy partner. We are interested in having our deliveries transferred to the countries who demand it. We are ready to implement our plans. We have all the capabilities. We want no politics in that. That has to do only with the economic matters. Now I speak about economic expediency only. All routes are possible. We are ready to adjust the project. We are, do not hold the grudge towards Bulgaria and some other countries that they hadn't had the gut to oppose the decisions of the European Commission. If they are ready to come back to the table, then we are ready to do this too. But we need guarantees. We don't want to bear any costs. Our companies are not going to lose money because of someone's failure to calculate and assess the projects. We are ready for the dialogue, even with the Brussels companies and interested stakeholders because that is beneficial for the development of relations, bilateral relations and relations on the continent as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. The press conference is over.